Hey guys, we are back taking another look at the S3 Verge. It was meant to be the 3D chip for the masses. In the April edition of the PC Player magazine, Elsa took out a whole page advertisement, really setting the expectations high. Unfortunately, reality did not meet expectations. And by the end of the year, well, look at that, the PC Player awarded the S3 Verge the title of the most disappointing hardware. While the 3D chip was affordable and available off many cards and it did make games look prettier, the performance really wasn't improved and in many games actually reduced. They are quoting that Descent 2 would run 5% slower and they also noted a lot of driver issues with Direct 3D. You left some really awesome comments on the previous video and a lot of you shared the same experiences that I saw when testing the S3 Verge, but also many of you wanted me to dig a little bit deeper. So today we will be upgrading the RAM from two to four megabytes. We will be overclocking the card. We will also test lowering the resolution and I have a few more games that we will be testing including Descent 2 and Terminal Velocity. We also found that there's a benefit from having a fast processor so today we're going straight to the Athlon 64. Also while testing I made two discoveries that I found really interesting and I will be sharing with you. Our test system we have an Athlon 64 3000 plus running at 2 gigahertz, 256 megabytes of RAM for storage. Today a 32 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme SD card that we're using with an SD to ID adapter. Also the new version of the GoTech floppy emulator and we need some sound so we have a Sound Blaster Audigy. Let's start testing a few games. Tomb Raider is first one of my favorites and it's really easy to benchmark at least with the accelerated versions. There's a FPS counter. This is the software render version. Here we don't get the benefits of the FPS counter but we can tell it is silky smooth locked at 30 FPS and also the colors are really vibrant and bright. And now we're switching over to the S3D accelerated version. Now we still have two megabytes on the card. I will later show you the difference once we upgrade to four megabytes. And we can see the colors definitely looking different, not as bright, more muted and darker, but it does look nicer. The textures are filtered and that is the main benefit of the S3. Verge. The performance however is quite a bit lower. When shopping around I noticed that most of the video cards don't have the memory upgrades installed and I looked into that a little bit more and it turns out the prices were quite expensive. The PC Player magazine is like a time capsule and I love checking it out and going back in time. We can see here Microfun had an advertisement with various computer hardware and if we look at the Elsa Victory 3D the 2 megabyte version cost 316 Deutschmark but if you wanted the 4 megabyte version it cost 550 that's a premium for yeah of over 200 just for the RAM upgrade. However these prices didn't last for very long because the 3DFX Voodoo launched and the word spread that the S3 Verge wasn't that Good. So let's have a look at the prices just a few months later. This is the PC Player magazine from April of 1997 and you can now get the Elsa Victory 3D for only 190 Deutschmark or upgrade to the 4 megabyte version for 285. And a little bit below we can see the Diamond Monster 3D. This, this is the 3 dfx Voodoo costing 540 Deutschmark. A big part of this hobby and something I really enjoy is online shopping and hunting down parts. And for the RAM, well, we had to do just that. Here we have a photo of the memory module that's on the card. And basically all I did was type it into Google. I found a data sheet which shows us more specifications. It is the SOJ40 form factor and it is EDO DRAM. 
Google also finds a few hits on eBay and AliExpress. So I bought some replacement memory from Elite MT. Here's a photo and you can see me installing and upgrading the memory. I recommend you buy one extra. So we need four modules, buy another one just in case one is faulty. You do want to have a spare one. The upgraded memory has a couple of benefits. On the desktop, we can increase the resolution and we get more colors. So for example, with the two megabyte version, we get 16 million colors at 800 by 600, but at 1024 by 768, we're only getting 65,000 colors. With the four megabyte version, we're now also getting 16 million colors at 1024 by 768. What about Tomb Raider? Well, here is the game running with four megabytes. And the first difference is it runs much better. We're getting around three, four to five FPS better performance. And in terms of a percentage boost, this is actually quite noticeable. But there's another difference. And I'm curious if you spot it. I'll put the two captures side by side. And yeah, Lara Croft now has a shadow. So at least in Tomb Raider, the higher video memory, yeah, it enables, it unlocks more graphical effects. And maybe that's the case for other games. Maybe in Tomb Raider, there are also other differences, but yeah, this is really what I find so interesting about this hobby, little nuggets of information like this. What about overclocking? Let's check out what sort of performance boost we can extract for this card. We are using power strip and here's a slider. The clock speeds for the core and the memory, they are synchronized. And at first, yeah, I just tried my luck at 94 and 90 megahertz. Well, we're getting crashes and the sound looping. At 85 and at 80 megahertz, the game does launch, but I can see some corrupted pixels at the top of the screen. And in the end, 77 megahertz worked fine. Uh, for me with all the tests completing without any issues, that's a 10% higher clock speed. So we're back in Tomb Raider now with the RAM upgraded and the overclock applied. And I'm noticing that the FPS is now sort of fairly consistent. Sometimes it's hitting 15 FPS, but most of the time it's sitting between 11 and 15 FPS. So all in all, this is still on the low side, but it is a lot better than what we saw in the previous video where we had single digit FPS. So this is borderline getting into the territory where you could say this is playable. A lot of you mentioned that the 640 by 480 resolution is a little bit too much for the S3 Verge and that back in the day, well, you played at a lower resolution and you got much better performance. So I did just that. Let's start with playing at 320 by 200. And now we're getting silky smooth performance with 30 FPS most of the time. There are a few dips below, but yeah, the game is definitely silky smooth. And well, does it look better than the PlayStation version? I'm not sure. Let us know in the comments. But even more of interest is the 512 by 384 resolution. It's sort of halfway in between. And something I wasn't aware of, which is interesting, and I'm excited to share this with you, is that the capture card, as well as the monitor, they interpret this resolution as 1024 by 768, running at 70 Hertz. So maybe the video card is doing some double scanning here. The reason I'm so excited is 1024 by 768 is a really uh, capture friendly resolution and most monitors do a fairly good job at scaling this resolution. And there are some options for a native 1024 by 768, for example, an older 15 inch monitor or a 1366 by 768 monitor. So, and that means we're getting a clear sharp image even on LCD monitors. The performance also checks out between 15 and 24 FPS. So this is now definitely playable. Sometimes when there's lots going on on the screen, it does yeah, slow down a little bit, but most of the time I would say yes, Tomb Raider at that resolution with the overclock and the additional VRAM is playable. 
We are also back testing Croc. Let's start with the software render 640 by 480. At the start of the game, you can tweak some of the settings and I cranked everything up and silky smooth. Again, the Athlon 64 is a hugely powerful processor for Windows 9.8 retro gaming and it does a fantastic job at handling this game. And here we have the S3 Verge version. So again, four megabytes of VRAM, a slight overclock applied and the graphics look nicer. The textures are filtered. The performance is around 11 to 12 FPS. So it is still on the low side, but it is much better than what we saw in the previous video with the two megabyte version. So the VRAM definitely makes a difference. So does the faster processor. And once again, we can lower the resolution. Here we have the game running at 512 by 384, which again, the monitor interprets as 1024 by 768, running at 70 Hertz and much better performance between 17 to 18 FPS. So it's, it's not as silky smooth as the software render, but again, we are approaching the level of performance where we could call this playable. And now let's test a few new games. Descent 2 is next. A lot of you mentioned this game. And well, let's start with the software render 640 by 480. And we are running in full screen mode. You can change the size of what's going on on the screen. So I've uh, made it the most demanding. And we're getting around 70 FPS. This game has a built-in FPS counter, which makes benchmarking a lot easier. So the software render on the Athlon 64, absolutely beautiful. And this is the S3D version. Again, the graphics are nicer. The textures are filtered. Everything looks smooth, but the performance, yeah, it is struggling. It's sitting in the twenties at best, but sometimes dips into the tens. And here the full screen mode is a little bit more demanding. I recommend you lower the screen size by one setting. So you have a, a small strip with uh, user interface elements at the bottom and then the performance is a bit more stable. It's still not silky smooth, but yeah, again, the conclusion is it's sort of playable. Now in this game, we are not able to lower the resolution. It seems to be hard coded for 640 by 480. And I also got a lot of comments about terminal velocity. So here we go. And again, we're starting with the software render version. For this game, I actually had a look at the system requirements and at the bare minimum, they're recommending a 486 with four megabytes of RAM. And the recommended system is a 486 DX2 66. And well, the Athlon 64 is much, much faster. In the software render version, we can tweak all sorts of options to do with the resolution, the sample rate of the audio. So everything again is maxed out. And this game also has a built-in FPS counter. It's sitting comfortably well over 60 FPS. And here we have the S3D version. We can see the same thing as in the other games. The performance is sitting around the 20 FPS mark, but it looks nicer. Everything is Filtered, the textures are filtered, everything looks smoother. It has that 3D accelerated look about it. But again, the performance, not that great. This being a slightly older game, and also there's a lot of fog going on, which limits the distance being rendered. So this game uh, is one of the more playable games, I would say. And again, the resolution seems to be hard coded. It is locked at 640 by 480. So to summarize the video, we doubled the RAM to four megabytes. We had a look at overclocking and we also checked out lowering the resolution. And yeah, the takeaway is those little differences, uh, all the tweaks combined can definitely make a difference. So to summarize it, you wanna have a fast processor, Athlon 64, Pentium 4, something really, really fast, it will benefit from having a strong CPU. The higher memory definitely makes a difference. And also with the resolution scaling, if there's an option to play at the 512 by 384 resolution, go for it. You will get a nice performance boost. And well, with the double scanning of 1024 by 768, that was a nice surprise. I'm 
eager to hear from you. Was that something you were aware of? Because this is the first time I've noticed that and that could be a little bit of a game changer. If other cards also, if other video cards also do this double scanning, then maybe this resolution will get a bit more attention in the future. In terms of overall assessment of the S3 Verge, well, instead of a thumbs down, maybe it's getting a neutral thumb now. So the performance definitely looks a lot better better. It's nowhere near that of a 3 dfx Voodoo, but it is approaching the level of where we can call this, it is playable. Now, looking forward, there are other S3 Verge cards like the uh, DX and the GX2, so stay tuned. I will have to make a few more purchases and this time I will make sure we have the RAM upgrade ready to go, but those are things coming to the channel very soon. And now I would love to hear from you. Put a comment down below. I love doing that in the morning, getting out early, a reason to get out of bed, getting a coffee and reading your comments. And you guys are so switched on. Very often, as much as I research a topic, once the video hits and I read the comments, well, I always have regrets. Why didn't I cover this? And that's why I really love these follow-up videos. I pay attention to what you're saying and then I'll do another video and hopefully this time I cover all the bases. So yeah, looking forward to reading your comments and as always, thank you so much for your support. Share the video with your friends. Also check out our Patreon page. We have a private Discord server where we can help you out with your own projects and that's it. Thank you for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.